about the partner program that Colab Systems is developing um, around Colab in general. Um, what it is, why we're doing it, um, where we are with it right now, etc. So the subtitle Accelerating into the Market Together probably gives you a good idea of what we're what we're trying to achieve with this. Oh, is this not plugged in? Sorry, moment. Uh-huh. That's okay, I can, oh, no. Where's the USB bit? All right. So, we've talked uh, yesterday quite a bit about, um, as Georg mentioned in the introduction, about the missing freedom um, online. And that's kind of one of these really ironic and s sadly ironic things that the internet was once held as a beacon of change, that people would be able to communicate freely, it would democratize the ability for people to publish um, information and store information and transmit it, and it, it would just, yes, people would be able, it would be empowered um, from the bottom up. And instead, the, the internet has turned into the world's best and most advanced surveillance engine um, that we've ever built, which is tragic. And with our mission, with Colab, um, is to, at least in the area of collaboration, ah, oh, thank you, in the area of collaboration, to address or try and address those problems directly by giving people a open and free uh, means that is secure, that isn't backdoored, that you can choose where your data is on your own servers or not. Um, so we're choosing to address that, that problem head on. Um, as a small-ish company um, and a product that, you know, is, doesn't quite have the same number of users as, say, Gmail yet, um, bringing that to the world at large is a really big task. It's a huge task. There's also an immense amount of commercial opportunity out there. So not only is there a good fight to be fought, um, in terms of returning freedom to people that we all deserve and, and, and should have. But there's also the, the more pragmatic, there's money to be made. And addressing those two issues on a global scale, or even just in Europe, is something that we feel, um, there's a, only so fast and so far we can do it on our own without um, the participation of others. So after, you know, we've got Colab 3 on its feet. It's deployed in some very large areas. The name recognition on the world is, is reasonable. Um, we get commercial requests continuously every single day from around the world uh, looking into, into Colab. So we've, uh, we've raised awareness, we've proven that it, it works in the market, and we feel that at this point, it's time to be working with others as well in those two goals of bringing freedom um, and uh, collab into the market. And we feel that by having a proper partner program, an extensive one focusing on that, we'll be able to um, achieve these goals much faster and on a much uh, larger scale. Um, and there are numerous reasons for that. Um, and it's not just, it's not only size. Um, if you go to collab now, it's, you know, the pricing is reasonable, but it's definitely Eurocentric in its pricing or, or North American centric as well. If you go to, say, Brazil, you have multiple issues there um, with the, the cloud hosted version of Colab. One, the economy is, is different, so it's, it's in real uh, value terms more expensive there. Uh, and then getting support in your time zone getting support in your language, getting support that is culturally uh, attuned to you as a customer is difficult for us as a European, Central European company um, to provide. So we've started to look at how can we work with others, um, other companies, other interests, other communities to bring Colab into the market. Um, and we've gotten to the point where we've actually, we have a few of our first um, partners in these veins uh, and we're working now the rest of the year to roll this out in a very large um, and coordinated way. And so we're going to take a look at both the definition 
of the partner program, who we're looking to work with, what um, each of these types of partners um, will be doing or can do with us and what we can do with, with you, um, as well as some of the details of when you become a partner, uh, what you get out of the deal as well. So, in addition to it just being a, a partner with, with uh, Colab Systems and in Colab, um, we have a larger ecosystem as well around us, such as we've been talking a lot about Power8 to this event, um, with IBM and their partners as well. Um, and so when we bring in partners to work with us on Colab, we're actually inviting you into a much larger um, space and a much larger ecosystem that has the likes of IBM and Red Hat and uh, behind it. Um, who here has seen, I know that all you guys were at the Taster events, but who here has seen the Colab Taster events online? Uh -huh. So for those who are shaking your head, if you go to taster.colab, uh, colabsystems.com, yeah? uh, you will see these events we've done over the last few weeks um, in coordination with, with IBM and Red Hat, um, focusing on the open stack. Uh, from the hardware through the operating system up to the application stack. So when we talk about partnering, keep in mind that this is not only with us, but our broader ecosystem and our set of partners and technology um, delivery um, uh, partners as well. So we broke um, the larger partner concept into three very specific defined uh, markets and, and profiles of, of, of partners. Um, and you'll notice they, they map quite nicely actually to how we deliver Colab in general. So at Colab Systems we deliver Colab in basically three basic packages. One is on-site, you, it's your server, you say where it is, we put it on there with you, for you, or you can yourself. Um, so you have on-site delivery. We have hosted instances, so you can have your own dedicated instance that you don't worry about, you know, management of, no backups, it's all handled for you. So hosting, um, and we also do um, the Colab Now public cloud, where you can go on and put your, um, your email accounts in with a larger pool on, on infrastructure that we manage for you as well. So the first, um, and that's our software as a service um, uh, offerings. And so the first uh, class, if you will, or, or, or type of partner that we've started to work with are resellers, just straight resellers of the software as a service. So these are, are groups that can take the product we already have um, online and rebundle it, repackage it, and deliver it into their market to their target audience, um, allowing for both vertical application of it, um, but also regional um, application. So. Has everyone here seen what Colab now looks like, user interface wise? Yeah, oh yes, you've all seen it over there. That's right, oh yes, we have demo stations, true enough. Um, so th just keep that in mind, because I'm gonna show you what um, our first big reseller, we have um, three resellers now, but this one is I think the, the more exciting one. Um, they're right in the middle of doing their official launch right now. Um, you, if you were at CBIT and visited us there, you would have seen them, um, and that is Secure Swiss Data. So this is their white labeled um, version of, or entry point to the Colab Now Cloud. It looks completely different, it has a completely different message uh, to it, and this is their messaging. They're really focused on the, primarily the North American, but also European audience, so they've got a bit more, I think a bit more of an edgy uh, approach to it, which is really nice. Also beautiful pictures of mountains, because it's Swiss. Um, but this really shows the, the, the possibility. I mean, if you looked at it, you would go, well, okay, I, this looks like you know, secure Swiss data. What are, and all they're doing is simply uh, reselling the software as the services that we provide. They don't manage any servers, they don't manage the, you know, the billing backends, et cetera. We work with them to do that. They turn around and resell. Um, they've actually defined their own packages so that if you go to Colab now and sign up, while the feature set is the same, what comes included and what the names of the, the default um, uh, packages are vary. So we really are able to, from the uh, service level all the way through to presentational um, white label or customize for our, our resellers. Within that, we obviously have a, um, a revenue sharing model. So the reseller is free to set the pricing that they want um, and then we Yes, share revenue from there 
on a case-by-case -case basis. So they're actually uh, reselling both Colab Now Public Cloud as well as hosted instances. So the full software as a services um, suite. The second class of uh, partner that we defined is ASPs and ISPs. We kind of lump, the, lump them together because from our perspective and how we deliver um, to them is, is the same, even though they have different business models and, and different um, audiences that they, they cater to. So the application service provider and the internet service provider uh, market, um, essentially what we do for them is help set up their own Colab now, but on their servers, under their management, etc. We provide um, technical training, we provide um, sales uh, training to them as well. Um, we consult as to how it should be set up, how do you manage it in the long term, uh, make sure that they deliver a quality, are able to deliver a quality service um, to their customers and their clients. Um, again, they're free to set uh, their pricing. Um, we have a, also a revenue model for them where the more seats they have, it obviously descends down to a, a very affordable per seat um, price. The pricing for them is um, based purely on active seats in their installation um, with no base level entry you know, fee you have to pay up front, which is refreshing to many of them um, because they're used to more of the Microsoft model where you pay a whole bunch of licensing fees just to get going and then you start paying per seat. Um, but free software to the rescue, um, it's purely based on per seat. And so they get the ability from us as the experts around Colab to deliver instantly a high quality service that they own. And this has become more and more interesting to this, this segment um, of the market, um, in particular since Microsoft has moved to Office 365. And they're pushing people towards Office 365 um, and their solutions. And they say, no, you can edit your, your Office files there. You can you have your Skype-based um, uh, virtual uh, 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 VoIP um, system. And so what's happening for a lot of these uh, companies is that they're being, they, Microsoft is coming in just scooping out <laughs> their customer base from them to the point where, especially for ISPs, they just become a pipe and nothing more. There's nothing to differentiate them from their customers, there's no way, or from their competitors. There's, they've lost a very important way of building a relationship and, and uh, retaining customer loyalty. Um, and so Colab fits into that very nice area where we have a proven, scalable solution that you can manage quite effectively and affordably, but it gets you away from um, these larger companies like Microsoft and Google that are essentially trying to take your customers away from you for all intents and purposes. So um, as with um, the example of Swiss Secure Data, or Secure Swiss Data, we have um, a ASP um, partner in Switzerland, um, Avectris. They were a, uh, used to be, many years ago, the uh, IT departments for four different energy companies in Switzerland. And the energy companies looked at it and went, well, we're not IT companies, this is silly, so we could, if we just put them all together, kick them out the door, make them a, a for-profit company of their own, they can deliver the same services and we might even make some money. They're now in the main engineering building, they've got 400 some odd um, technical uh, people. So you just add the management and sales on top of that. They primarily service um, the energy sector in Europe our energy sector companies in Europe. They do have um, customers in Asia as well. Um, interestingly enough, Evectris is um, one of the five Microsoft uh, Platinum partners in Switzerland. So they're one of the top five um, Microsoft licensees in the country. They had one guy on staff who had Linux expertise, officially. Um, and so when we walked in and they asked us to come in, we demoed our solution next to others, showed how the model works for partnership um, and how due to the nature of, of free software and open source, they just get benefits they wouldn't get elsewhere. And they went, okay, great. Only problem is we have no Linux infrastructure. We have no Linux expertise. We want what you have. Can you help us? And that's of course exactly what we've done. Um, originally, they were planning on deploying it on uh, the Windows, the, the Microsoft um, uh, virtualization platform, because that's what they deliver everything else on. 
Uh, we got it set up for them on that platform. They said, well, can we hook it into um, Active Directory? We said, yes, of course, here's how it looks. And we worked with them to do that. Um, but then they, they took a step back after they, this was all done and they crunched the numbers and they said, you know, the funny thing is, the Hyper-V platform is gonna be the most expensive part of this solution now. It, it, with our other Microsoft, um, uh, or proprietary, not just Microsoft, but our proprietary solutions, the licensing of the proprietary solutions, uh, I mean, just hides, uh, the, the virtualization layer is just not, a, not an important line item. But suddenly, with, um, with Colab, both because we can run it on less hardware, fewer resources, um, fewer people to, to keep it up as a result, um, and because of the, the very um, good model for the per seat um, licensing, suddenly the virtualization platform they were paying for was visible in the budget. And they said, can we get rid of that? Um, and we said, yeah, you could. You could move to an entirely Red Hat Enterprise Linux solution, that's what we do. You, we could put the virtualization on there. And so they actually built out an entirely new um, hardware uh, solution specifically to run Linux. They've hired a few more for a few new engineers that actually are have Linux expertise. So this has been a really interesting journey with them where we walked in and said, yes, we can make it work in your environment on the choice of your platform. We can do this. And we showed them we could do it. Um, but then at the end they turned around and went, no, we're gonna do it your way anyways, because it, it we understand now why you why you've um, picked um, you know Linux as your base and built on that. This is a really nice um, example. So one of their first customers that they've rolled this out to, they're using it internally, but they're also using it with their customers, and they're offering it as an alternative to Microsoft Exchange. And the first customer, they didn't want to migrate everybody off, the few hundred um, accounts that are on the Microsoft Exchange, um, because that's disruptive. So they're actually running it in parallel, and all the new accounts, um, and all the people that were moving off of an older system, are in Colab, and while the 100 and some odd um, seats are still in the old exchange, they don't have to deal with uh, transferring data, and the people just use it together. Um, we went in, we trained their, um, their support staff to do, you know, basically handle first level, second level kind of requests. We actually got another set of training coming up um, next week, actually, with them um, to help their engineers understand how to do more complex uh, maintenance things. And so we're there uh, with them all the way along including for their, uh, that one customer they've um, already rolled out to, we provide a white label uh, presentation um, branded uh, with their customer's branding. So they have a version that they, where it's branded for a Vectris, their, their logo, their colors, it looks like you know, a Vectris, but it's just powered by Colab. And then when they deliver it to the customers, we again help them white label that uh, for each customer. So each customer gets this beautiful tailor-made solution. Um, and they're able to deliver that at a lower price without the fear of Microsoft coming in and stealing them off to Office 365. The third um, sort of, or third class of, of partners that we're working with are integrators. And these are your typical IT, often very regional, ranging in size from a few people working out of a small office to international um, with thousands of, of uh, IT specialists who, go into companies that need IT, which is everybody, um, and sorts out their IT from printers and laptops to server-side software um, and everything, often everything in between. Um, we're working with integrators to help them add Colab to their suite of offerings. So they can walk in and go, yes, we can you know, set up your Windows machines. Yes, we can do that. We can put your printers in, great. We can do your networking, blah, 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 blah. We can also provide you know, your VoIP and now they can provide um, a proven open source uh, collaboration platform. Um, and again, just as with the first two uh, categories of, uh, of uh, partners, we have a revenue model that is standardized that um, keeps everybody very much um, incentivated to sell and support and keep our customers, our combined customers happy. Um, and so with these three different groups or, or types of partners, we're able to, um, in the currently and in the future, to really broaden our impact and reach new audiences. With resellers, we get to hit the uh, consumer market a lot, um, a lot harder and a lot with a lot better coverage. With the ASP, ISP customers, we're able to get into the hosting environments a lot, a lot more um, than we could ever do on our own. And with integrators, we're able to 
uh, mobilize with our partners the um, and on the ground, if you will, army of IT specialists that can bring Colab into your local town, your local um, cities, governments, companies, et cetera, et cetera. And just with the, as with the previous two, we have a support system uh, for them as well. So to talk about um, a bit about uh, how we support and what we offer to integrators in specific, um, I'm gonna invite uh, Peter Lemkin to come up, who is with Colab Austria. Uh, we just recently opened, officially opened an office in Austria due to demand and interest there. Um, Peter is heading that up and is a partner manager um, for us as well. So he's got a fair amount of um, uh, information to share with us about what, how, we're, how we plan to help our integrators. Okay. Yeah. Uh, still good morning. It's one minute before noon. Um, thank you for the for the introduction to that. Um, integrators, in a general sense, uh, Aaron has already given the overview of that. What I'd like to focus on is the local and regional aspect of it. Because, um, just to give you a short background on me, I've been working for another open source company for the past four years. And in that uh, capacity, I have worked with local integrators all over the world. I managed to uh, get new regions. I worked for a new company in Israel. I worked in uh, the, the region of South Africa. I worked in the UK and Ireland. And the idea for Colab to move over to Austria um, actually came from, from a customer request uh, from a big, large institutional customer from the government and who specifically said, yes, you, we would like to work with Colab, but we would also need to have a local integrator that you are working closely with and that you have a good collaboration with and so we can feel secure in having local support and local um, people to talk to so that we feel secure in having our infrastructure set up by a local company. So enabling a local customer is actually what all this is about. So what I'd like to, to talk about is the question of whether can we, can we scale up as Colab uh, headquartered in Switzerland and manage all the regions on, on the planet that are interested in Colab? The answer is no, we can't. Not without local integrators, not without local partners, that support us, that are interested in pushing our message forward and that are interested in actually pushing the product and enabling us to get new customers. I'd like to get a, I'd like to get a little more specific about how we did this in Austria, how this worked out in Austria and how we believe that scales to other countries as well and how we can actually win a lot more new customers with local partners. So that's the idea behind it. Um, Aaron, you haven't actually shown me, can I move on from there? All right, we've got the partner benefits. And I'd like to just give you an overview of what we have designed as part of our partner program. And um, I will give you some, some examples of how we did this in Austria, how we'll continue to do this in Austria and in a later stage, move this on to other countries. All right? so. Selling the product actually is the most important thing because without getting new customers, you will not be interested, uh, no local partner will be interested in actually working for us together with us. So what we'll do and what we continue to do already is to enable them in terms of sales support and training. So how do you sell an open source product? Well, you can't. Because there is no licensing fee, we all know that, so what you have to do is to make a customer understand that there is added value in using an open source solution and using the uh, support and the uh, technical knowledge of the company behind the product itself. So it is talking to the customer, it's talking to our partner and making him understand what we stand for, what our values are, what our technology uh, is able to do and what that really gives the benefits to his own customer. There are a lot of regional aspects in that and let me give you a, a small idea about uh, doing business in Austria. As most of you know, I'm not Austrian. I live in Austria, but I'm a German. 
And even if I had lived as a German in Austria for the past 20 years, which I have not, um, I would not be privy to all the intricacies of Austrian politics, Austrian policies, and Austrian personal involvements and, and all the connections that are going on. For that, you need a local partner. And now, Austria may be very, very close to Germany and Switzerland, but uh, if we are talking about other regions, like Israel or India or Australia or whatever, you will always find there are regional specifics that nobody else than a local partner can actually handle. And by handling means um, actually selling our services and products. So we are really, really depending on the local partner and integrator. So what we're doing is we're giving them the training to understand, to make them understand what our value proposition is in terms of open source software and our services, and then make him translate that to his regional market and actually make his customers understand why Colab is a good choice, how we are positioned against our uh, competitors, and how we are managing to uh, move forward and actually win uh, and make money with us. That, that's what it boils down to. Every local integrator wants to make money and needs to see our support in making them translate that into their local business. So that's the part of sales support and training. Now, we have uh, had the Cola Taster, as you know. We have had that in Zurich. We'll have that in Bern next week. And we've just had one in Vienna. And Vienna was really a prime example of really entering a new market. So we gave our local partner, which we have, um, the, the opportunity of talking to his customers through our marketing assets. We do this in collaboration with IBM and Red Hat, so the, the event was actually covered. So the task was to go out and make uh, contacts to the local car, uh, customers in Austria, make them understand, hey, there is a new kid in town, just visit us, get an idea about what we are doing in a technical sense and to get an idea of how we collaborate with our local partners and our technology partners like IBM and Red Hat. So they're getting professional marketing assistance. We have a continuous um, effort going on in standardizing our marketing efforts. We have a great guy on board who actually does that very, very well. And so this is how we are able to provide a package of marketing support um, that many other open source companies do not have in that comprehensive uh, level. All right. Now, the technical support and training is probably one of the most important aspects of this. Um, if you have a local partner and a local integrator who just is not a reseller, but actually an integrator, he needs to be technically savvy. He needs to know what he's doing. Um, for the simple reason that we as a company, we cannot scale up to actually serving all the end customers. So the requirement for us is to sign up a partner who is able to do a level one and level two support. And us always being in the background and being available on a very high service level to actually solve real technical problems that a regular engineer cannot handle. We're talking about source code level support. This is what we can provide to them. So we're providing the kind of technical expertise to our local partners. And we are able to do that on a very high level. We have certifications coming up. This is all still playing out in the future. This is what I'm working on with Aaron. But uh, in the end, we already provide the kind of technical support for a local partner that he feels confident in implementing and supporting his customers. All right. Um, this is, again goes back to marketing. So exclusive monthly updates by newsletters is just giving a local partner an idea of where are we moving? Or are we moving at all? Yes, we are. We are winning new customers. We are giving updates about our technology. We are giving an overview of where we are going, what our roadmap is, and stuff like that. We don't want to overdo this, so a monthly newsletter is going to be comprehensive, it's going to be short, but it's going to be having interesting information that will enable a partner to talk to his customer and say, hey, something new has come up with Cola up there, doing some really interesting stuff, Roundcube 2 is coming up, Cube as a mail client is coming up, and there is going to be stuff that you will be really excited about in the upcoming months. All right? 
So um, one of the things is, as an open source company, we are heavily dependent. No, we are actually addicted, and we can't do without the community, right? So the community as a development and support and as actually moving forward the development in terms of roadmap and stuff like that, we want to do that on our partner level as well. What we are trying to do is to find a, a point of where our partners do not interact with us directly, but interact within their community as partners as well. They're talking about their regional aspects, they're talking about um, customers that they have and exchanging themselves. So we want to take us ourselves back. We just want to provide a platform for our partners to interact, which gives them the opportunity to actually find out what can I do as an integrator? What have you done? Do you have an example of how you did it with your customer? So this is our plan. Um, it's not implemented yet, but it's still on the roadmap. But this is um, something that we are going to do. A lot of that, by the way, is still work in progress. But it's cool to actually be working on that and trying to get feedback from our existing local customers and local partners and trying to scale that to new partners, winning them and making them understand that working with Coolab is actually a cool idea. Right? Um, just as Red Hat um, tries to offload a lot of their technical expertise on a non-personal level, we are trying to uh, work up on a knowledge base. And that knowledge base is designed to be available to partners only. Because those are very, very practical things that our partners have already started implementing. They are working with their local customers and they encountered problems, they encountered challenges, and they came up with cool new ideas. Um, we what we want to do is to make that available to all of our partners as kind of an online knowledge base. Right? Um, the co-marketing actually goes back to uh, anything related to marketing. We luckily have somebody who actually is really, really heavily involved in marketing, uh, creating an identity of Colab that will enable a partner to be part of an ecosystem within themselves. So creating co-marketing opportunities in one place will give us the opportunity to do that in 10 places and 50 places all around the world. This is what we're targeting at, right? Um, the technology ecosystem, um, you've heard about all the things that we can do on the server side, like the Power Aid system that we have had vast experience with now, which is a cool and new technology. We are working on the new technologies like RoundCube2 and Q as a mail client. We want to inform partners about that as early as possible because that makes them interested in um, telling their customers, hey, something new is coming up. So we are reaching out to potential new customers and we are reaching out to new potential partners by having them in our ecosystem as well, right? Um, the last thing is actually one of the most important things is to have online capabilities as much as we can. You may remember um, like 10 years ago, the service-oriented architecture was a big thing. Everybody talked about that, and very few people actually implemented it. But um, it is our idea to give our partners and our big customers the opportunity to self-service themselves as much as possible. Also, this is still a work in progress. We have very cool ideas coming up from Aaron and from the rest of the company to make it as easy as possible for a partner to interact with Colab. To interact with Colab as a business partner. Because in the end, it all boils down to money. You want to spend at least a, 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 a very little time in interacting with your provider of software. You want to do as much for yourself as you can and we want to do that by actually do all the online purchasing, subscription management, reminders of when your subscription is running out. We want to do that online as much as, uh, as possible. So having exclusive access into our partner ecosystem as part of our website is going to be one of the steps that we are going to be implementing at the end of the year. So um, a lot of things really going on and as you can see, I'm still struggling to, to give you very, very many specifics. It's all a lot of work in progress, but we are pretty much on the same page of where we want to go. 
where do we want to go? We want to have a worldwide partner ecosystem that uh, spreads out the message of COLA being the really, really cool thing in terms of open source in replacing existing technologies with a different business model. And in the end, which is the most important thing, if you work with COLA as a partner, you have the really, really big opportunity of making lots of money. Because we're individual, you can talk to us, we can design our business model around your requirements as a local partners for your customers and really servicing big infrastructures as we are doing in Austria now. So that's what we are going and uh, still a lot of work to be done, but it's an exciting thing to be, be part of actually working on that and trying to find out how we can best work with our partners to make them happy, actually make a lot of money. This is what it is all about and so I hope to be part of that. It's cool to be part of that. Thank you very much.